you read some of the comments on the local news stations, uh, you get a sense that there is a lot of negativity in our community. How can we turn this around so that there's more positivity and more community pride? That was one of the things that we heard a lot about when we did the community consultations, and it was really interesting in that there was a, and Tori can attest to this because she was, she was at all of them. When, when, when we had people in the room that were new to the Sioux, or uh, that were new to the Sioux either because they moved here or they got employment here, um, and some of these people had senior positions in the community, a number of the people that came to our community made that comment. They'd say, like, you have such a beautiful community, and, you know, I don't lose any time to traffic. And they're, like, you have a college, and you have a university, and you have a beautiful waterfront, you can, you know, go to the beach, and there's all these fun things to do, and you have great hiking and great skiing. Why are people here more positive about it? And, you know, it was something that we heard frequently, and I think that the communities have a lot of challenges, and it's very natural when you've gone through challenging times uh, to feel negatively about them. And, you know, when you read the news and you see people being laid off, it's, it's a natural condition to be concerned about that and feel negative. And it's, it's difficult to focus on the positive, and I, and I think that that's a matter of leadership. So I think that the people sitting on this stage, I think that the chamber, I think that the EDC, I think the Innovation Center, obviously the city, I think the college and the university, the community leaders have to make a concerted effort to, to talk about the community positively and to focus on the positives in our community and, you know, frankly not spend as much time talking about some of the challenges. One of the things that I feel very comfortable about and, and, and I often say to people when we discuss the challenges is that we're not alone in this. Like, don't look at your community. I think a lot of people um, lose sight of that sometimes. Some of the negativity is as a result of people thinking, well, this is happening in Sault Ste. Marie. But it, it's happening, we saw, we saw it in that film happening in Detroit. It's happening all over the place. The challenges in this community are not an, an, anomalous. The demographic challenges are not anomalous. The aged industry challenges are not anomalous. The, the ability to develop on an entrepreneurial workforce and in a, in a, in a workforce that has the skills of the economy of the 21st century are not anomalous. So we shouldn't feel like we are the only community that has these challenges. What we should recognize is that we are going to be the community that gets ahead of these challenges. And that's the difference, that we have the strength and the ability where we, we recognize and acknowledge the challenges, but we'll get out in front of them. So I think, you know, it, it, you have to acknowledge the challenges, you have to acknowledge that there is negativity, but you have to recognize that and contextualize that and, and believe in yourself as leaders in the community and believe in the community itself, uh, that it can rise above those. And, and I think strongly if we focus on the community that we want to be and we focus on that collectively, we will become that. What do you think we can do to diversify or strengthen our economy? So I have a couple of perspectives. Um, you might not know that, uh, so I am the founder of Startup Sault Ste. Marie, which I created about three years ago, but about 10 months ago, I decided to take on the role of uh, manager of investment and trade with the Sault Ste. Marie Economic Development Corporation. So I'm sort of involved in multiple facets of this question. Um, I'm responsible for launching the Invest Sault Ste. Marie program, which is really bringing some, some assets to bear on selling Sault Ste. Marie to other companies and communities around the world. Uh, we're, we're going through a couple different stages of the project where we're identifying the cost structure of Sault Ste. Marie. We've been part of a study that says we're very competitive in a number of sectors. Um, we've done some work with our local companies, identified companies that have potential to export. Some of them already are, but they, they need help to get to other markets. So we're identifying those companies we can work with and we can sell outside of the community. We're working with consultants right now to identify the key sectors we should be looking at. So we've been going after different sectors over the years, but things have changed. We may have different opportunities now. We may have more competitive advantages now for different sectors. So we're working with those consultants to identify the four to five sectors we should really be going after. And then we can push Sault Ste. Marie, find those people we need to talk to and sell Sault Ste. Marie as a place to do business. So what does your organization do to inspire the youth of the Sioux to enter entrepreneurship? Community of support. So there is the entrepreneurial ecosystem and I think we're working on it, but the parents and the skepticism when a young person wants to start a business. 
um, and the kind of the lack of faith in that they're actually using their education, they're not wasting their talents, and I think that's something that we're working on. I must add to that, but I, it, it's a, a provincial catchphrase that's been growing over the years. But um, the no wrong door approach, I think, I think ultimately what we're looking at as a as a group up here is saying. Anybody that walks in, any one of our organizations, should be able to, using roadmaps, using um, um, partnership agreements, collaboration, find the right path for them to move forward to get their, their business. We need to have access to, to uh, you know, to the gray matter, the wisdom of, uh, of an existing entrepreneurial community. Yeah, our times are a little bit different than they were maybe 20 years ago, but you know what, the same principles of approaching a bank, are the same as they were 20 years ago. The fundamentals of cash flow and net positive uh, cash flow and income and, and how do you structure yourself for finance, those principles remain relatively the same. So to be able to tap into those markets, which then extends itself into one of those principles of access to capital within your community. You know, those mentors in many, in many instances become the investor that takes you to the next level and it bridges that gap, that chasm of commercialization if you're looking to scale up in the community. So, you know, those elements are very, very key and we as a Chamber of Commerce look to provide that at that community level as well as supporting things as Angela says to, uh, you know, force the government to recognize that business should be a mandatory course in high school. They, our kids need to come out and recognize that, you know, the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and, and what's the other, mathematics, but we add to that arts as well, are all opportunities for growth. And these need to be taught to our children, and they should be done on a mandatory uh, basis in our mind. We initiative in the North called um, Head Start in Business, which is a collaboration effort of uh, CFDCs across Northern Ontario that offer um, programming in elementary and high schools as well, um, whether that be uh, youth enterprise camps in the summer, uh, youth, um, sorry, enterprise Olympics or market your thoughts and, and those types of things. So again, we're just reiterating the importance of getting, uh, sparking this or planting this entrepreneurial seed at a young age is, is very important.